Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center's new series, The Art of Nature. And today we're diving under the ocean. Maybe you've seen tropical fish at the aquarium, all kinds of colors and stripes. So we are going to go and make our own underwater kind of scape. But look, I want you to notice something a little bit different. Do you see how our fish kind of pop off? That's called relief, where our fishes kind of pop off the paper a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. So it's kind of two parts. One part is making our environment for our fish to live in, and the other part of our project is to actually make the fish. Let's take a look at some real fish. Fish come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but I want you to pay, pay really close attention to the basic shapes that make our fishes up. A lot of times they're as simple as an oval and a circle with a triangle for the tail. So look, this is kind of like a circle. These are the fins, and there's a little triangle tail. Now, you'll notice our little fishy mouth there. I don't really have a smile, but you can put one on if you like. This is an example of a type of environment we can put our fishes in. So there's going to be coral and kelp and rocks. You can even put a, a, a treasure chest in there or an old shipwreck if you wanted to. There's all kinds of ways you can dress up our environment. Let's look at some more fish. Now, if we look at this fish, you can kind of see how it's almost a square with a little nose sticking out. And here's some coral. The coral is dying. We have to be very respectful of the coral and try to make sure it stays alive because so much of the sea life depends on it. Here's a fish that looks like it used every color in the rainbow. Look how the back part of this fish is cool colors like blue, but the front part of him is warm colors like oranges. This fish is simply striped with orange and pink stripes on them. So there's all kinds of patterns. You can use polka dots, you can use squiggly lines, you can use stripes. And our last fish has just got all over the map. Look, it's not even really a stripe, it's kind of like a, a racetrack on the side of them. So when you're designing your fish, remember, they can be any color and they can be all kinds of patterns. Let's take another look at mine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our background. I drew some coral this type of coral, and then I got this kind of bank of coral there that I just kind of use squiggly lines. I've got my kelp. Look, my kelp goes all the way off the top of my page. This is the sea floor, so I painted it sandy color. And you can tell I used oil pastels to add some texture to my water. Let's paint an underwater scene. Now there's not a horizon line per se, but there is a line where the beach is. So let's make a line where the beach is. And now we're gonna have some of these little kind of upside down or like snow cone, wiggly snow cone things. So it's like an upside down triangle and it's got an oval on the top. That's the way a certain type of plant grows under the ocean, like a little tornado. And there's the top and let's make a little guy coming off the side here. Now there's also rocks. I'm gonna take my gray oil pastel and I'm going to make some rocks. I'm just kind of making them unusual shapes. Some of them are big, some are small. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a big rock ledge over here. There's some bigger rocks. All right, now I need myself some sea kelp. Those go like that. Some of them go off. Some of them don't necessarily go all the way off. And one last one up here. There's the bottom. All right, now the last thing I need is this little line of coral. Again, it's a squiggly line. Squiggly, squiggly, squiggly. That's all it shows because the rocks are there. I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. When coral is healthy and alive, it is full of amazing color and it supports so much life. Very important to our ecosystem. All right, well, I think that's about it. I'll put a few more of these lines in here. Woo-hoo! Maybe color the inside of this a little bit. Maybe put a little bit of light green in here. All right, now it's time to paint. Remember, when you paint, Leave your paint set up on the side that you do, you use your hand. I'm left-handed, that way I'm not dripping stuff over my picture. 
So I'm going to stir and stir until I get all the blue that I want. Now there is one thing I forgot to do, but you can do that afterwards. I'm going to put some texture, little waves in my water. But I'm going to do that afterwards. See how my brush strokes are going back and forth, not up and down? When I paint my green kelp, I can go right over that blue and the green will still show. Now I'm going to put a little bit of this other color in it, but I want to clean it off first. I had made brown with it earlier today. So now my water's got kind of two colors of blue. This is called aqua blue. The other one is called indigo blue. This kind of gives it a little bit of wavy thing going on. Just a little bit more over here. Our green kelp. Now we're going to paint our pinky coral that's really close to us. Are you guys seeing how the oil pastel shines through? So I can put things like texture on there and the oil pastel shines right on through. Alrighty. Now we're going to make, remember what I say about brown, there's two ways to get to brown, three ways to get to brown. Orange and blue, red and green, purple and yellow. These are complements, they're found opposite each other on the color wheel. All three of those make brown. Personally. I'm a little partial to the blue and orange, but that's just me. If I want it darker, I add some more blue. And that makes a different color brown. Again, do you see how loose my brush is? I'm not fretting over if this is perfect or that is perfect. I'm more concerned that I'm having fun. I think I missed a little bit of blue there, so let's go back in and get that. There we go. And our coral, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of maybe red and maybe some pink. And we'll fill in the little bits of spaces that are left on our row of coral. Again, last thing we have left is our rocks. They're gray, so I'm going to use a water and black paint to make my gray. Because there is sunlight that hits the bottom of the ocean floor. All right, there we go. Here is our landscape. The one thing it needs now is our fish. I'm going to lay my fish out. I'm going to see where I want to put them. That way I can change my mind if I want. I'm going to put this guy over here because if I put him over there, he's going to disappear with all the pink. I'm going to put this guy and go over here. I'll put this guy by these little bricks here, the rocks. And I'll put this guy up here. So now that I know where my fishies are going, I'm going to glue them down. But I'm going to put them on these little blocks of cardboard, and it's going to raise the fish up a little bit. So I'm kind of making a cardboard sandwich. First, I'm going to put glue on the cardboard. I'm going to glue it where I want my fish to be. I want my fish to really come off, so I'm going to do two. So put a little bit more, and put that. See how I make kind of like a cardboard sandwich? Now, I get to put my fish on here. There you go, fishy. Now my fish is ri risen off of the page, so it's kind of like a 3D or relief element to my artwork. Let's put another fish. Here's my first bit of glue. Now I'm making my glue sandwich. Here's another bit of it. And let's get our little guy up here. There we go. Okay, now our big guy here. 
And we'll put him right in the middle there. And we have our one last fish. I have one piece of cardboard left, so he's not going to be as high as the rest of them are. But that's okay. It's called variety. Variety in your artwork makes your artwork more interesting for someone to look at. Alrighty. Ta-da! All fish is in place on our, on our beautiful seascape background. Not only are fish necessary for our planet to function, but they are works of art in themselves. And if you're ever bored and want to look at beauty, just go to an aquarium. Because you will find a lot of beauty of nature in an aquarium. And if you get to go snorkeling where they're living in their own land, that's even better. So thanks for joining us and learning how to make an underwater seascape. I hope you had fun making our fish. We'll see you again soon for another episode of The Art of Nature.